Well, howdy. Welcome back to Welker Farms. So I just finished laying down some pre-spray for the Camelina acres we're putting in. We we're all calibrated. The drill's out in the field right now. And then the guys are getting the peas ready and the other drill to go lay some yellow peas down on the ground. So with all that said, let's get this plant 2023 ready to roll, as we call seeding, but everyone says plant. But anyways, today's video is brought to you by Rocket Money. So we'll talk about that more in a minute, but let's get up to the field. Let's fire up a tractor. Let's get this year started. I'm ready. And like that, we're rolling. Putting down some Camelina. It's been a little bit of a struggle getting things calibrated and figured out, um, but I'm moving. The seed's going in the ground. So I think we're on the right track. So the other drills uh, just starting to get in the field. They're getting going on the peas. I'm gonna knock out this 150 some acres and then we'll go back and switch over to peas. But uh, yeah, there's not much going down. It's uh, only six pounds an acre is what I got my uh, seed rate at. I ran my fertilizer up to 38, which isn't a whole lot. Pull my scales up here. You can see it says I've got 136 acres of seed left and 143 acres of fertilizer. I have one more bag of Camelina seed. I'll have to dump in the top when we get towards the end. Um, but yeah, so far so good. Got a bunch of little errors up here. I got a voltage issue. I think it's something on the tractor side, but it's working, so we'll just keep rolling with it. Oh, yeah. Level on that toolbar too, it needs a little more work. It's not quite level as good as it should be. Camelina has got to be seeded very shallow because it's such a tiny seed. There's not a lot of energy in that seed to produce much of a plant to push out of the ground. So they tell us, you're better to seed it shallower than deeper. Just scratch the surface base piece. So that's what I'm doing. So it's just gonna need a little rain eventually here and then it should be good to go. Let's keep going. So the air conditioner in this bud isn't working very good, so we've got some 134A that Leg Arms just showed up to give me to get it set up, but I was kind of watching my temperature here on my uh, water, and it is climbing steadily. It was 210, now it's 215, 220. I got it idly now, but I don't like that, so we got to find out why it's getting hot. Well, while he's getting the air conditioning set up on there, I'm going to get this hood open. He said he saw a little bit of coolant by the radiator, so there's a chance. I don't know, we'll find out what it is, but I bet it's leaking cooling out somewhere. We gotta find out where. That's probably what all this stuff is on the hood. Water. Yeah, it's leaking coolant somewhere. It's also leaking our oil again. All right, well, we decided. Might as well come back to the yard, get some tools. And then uh, we'll mix up some coolant, bring a couple jugs up there, get that bud topped off. I think I know where the leak's at, so I'll tighten her up. And then we can keep rolling at it. But while we're here at the farm, let's take a moment to go inside the shop and talk about today's sponsor, which is Rocket Money. Come on in. Now, as many of you have seen, Leg Arms just got done building the house, and mine is right around the corner. And building a house is no small endeavor. It's a massive financial investment, a lot of stress, a lot of planning, and hopefully an amazing outcome in the end. So. One of the biggest things you can do is your finances. And that's where Rocket Money can really help you out. Like say, setting up a budget. Something I'm terrible at. Fortunately, my wife's better at it. But with Rocket Money, I can get better at it. So with the Rocket Money app, you can set up a budget with thresholds for certain categories. So that way, if you start reaching those thresholds, it'll go, hey, you're spending a little bit. You better slow down. And then on top of that, you can see your spend to earn ratio, monthly, quarterly, yearly, really nice visualization of how things are flowing in and out of your bank. Now with Rocket Money having full access to your credit reports and history, it alerts you if there's significant changes that might impact your credit score and offer insights on ways to help improve it. And with interest rates the way they are today, a good credit score can go a long way to getting you that mortgage or loan that you're looking for. And a problem that many of us deal with is unwanted subscriptions, because everything today is subscription-based. So if you want to find a subscription that maybe you're paying for that you shouldn't be, or you just want to keep tabs on all your subscriptions, just one tap away and it'll alert you and show, hey, here's a subscription you could probably get rid of. Here's another one you could probably get rid of. Here's one that you have had for a long time and you haven't been paying attention to. That's really nice. <laughs> So head on over and download the Rocket Money app and unlock new features with premium. Just go over to rocketmoney.com slash welkerfarms or click on the link in the description below. Sound good? Let's get back to the field. All right, well, we uh, tightened up. There was four bolts on the radiator cap that were loose. I think we might have loosened them when we were messing with the fan 
housing, cowling, going, and we were trying to shift around because it was just barely ticking the fan, and I don't think we tightened them up properly. So that's probably why there was a little bit of coolant leaking, but I just don't think we put enough coolant in this thing when we put the radiator back in it. It took six gallons, and now I got coolant in the top, so she's gonna stay cooler now. So we'll keep an eye on the level on that. I'm gonna keep rolling here. My air conditioner is fixed, so now I got nice frosty air, so let's keep going. here turn on tank one tank two fan on put her into third gear parking brake off GPS is not quite there yet all right let's roll down at this 100, 150 acre field and then uh, done with the Camelina. I'm not sure what to say about my barometer though. I think uh, it's short now. <laughs> yeah, there's no way it's uh, 1600 degrees. All right, I'll just ignore that gauge. So I'm getting down to my last two or three passes plus the headlands and I'm getting fairly low on product. Let's pull up our scales here. This car's got scales and the one, two, three tanks is right here so I've got a thousand twenty two pounds in the front tank that's fertilizer 200 pounds in the middle tank and the rear tank doesn't have 116 pounds but I guess it's come on a slope with that said since I've got 29 acres left of fertilizer and 33 acres left of seed I'm not sure exactly how well it's leveling out as it's going down to the bottom of that hopper so I have a bag of seed right here on the fender if I need it I'll put it in there to finish out this field but I'm gonna climb inside level things out take a look and just see how we're sitting and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, first up is fertilizer. That's pretty even flowing down, looks good. All right. So, interesting. That side over there has got some kind of crusty ball of some kind, and you can see how less to see there is over here and how this side's still got a bunch. This is what happens. Hard to say, but let's go down there and inspect that. Find out why it's doing that. That probably means that that side hasn't been applicated as much seed, obviously. Oh well, we'll get in the field. Let's go inside. Okay, so why are we not distributing correctly here? Just cam lead over. It doesn't take much cam lead to go very far. It's kind of got a crusty, it's almost like it, see that kind of flaky. I wonder if that was in the bag when we dumped it in here. Now let's get the hands down. It's got agitators, so the agitators, you know, are breaking it up, but I don't know why. That side, uh, hard to move in here. That's a little more even. I still don't know why. I reached in there and I couldn't feel anything, but why that side's not emptying as evenly, so we'll just keep going. I'll keep an eye on this. And if so, I'll dump that last bag in. Okay, a little update. Um, seed and uh, yellow peas started this morning, pretty much. And uh, where I'm located right now, as you'll find kind of interesting, is it's Kathleen, Nick's wife, the mother of their children's uh, land. No, actually it's their new home site. And I'm seeding around it. It's on top of a hill to the northwest of uh, our, our home place. And I'll let you sh show it here. I thought maybe they were about done. No, concrete's coming, or the forms are being probably in the next week. Then cement coming, making concrete and uh, then the building will probably start taking place later on uh, in May. 
and uh, there will be a house in six months or a little longer uh, they'll probably be in in November who knows uh, but that's a guess of it anyway it's a great view you can see the sweet grass hills off in the distance and it's interesting for you people that uh, see when Nick flies the drone and uh, gives a big overview you see those mountains uh, um, uh, seem like really close they're actually about uh, the closest one is about 30 miles the farthest one is about 40 um, and they look small because everything in the distance with these kind of cameras uh, don't pick up the perspective uh, that we would see with their eyes when we look at it it's closer to what you see on the drone as far as the closeness of the of the hills we call them hills but they're actually mountains they're 7,000 feet high uh, so on elevation so anyway I uh, just thought I'd give you an update uh, we're gonna have yellow peas here it'll be flowering uh, when they're uh, probably putting the roof on or maybe the windows all right this is the last of the field of Camelina Right now I've got my meters running really fast trying to dump out the last of the Camelina that's in the tank. Let's go ahead and put it in the ground because I don't have any other use for it. So, as you can see my intelligent egg showing some stuff popping up on the monitor there. That's fine. That uh, shows that it's running out. Let's, uh, let's crank our fertilizer up too. Let's get this out of here. Oop, wrong one. Let's lift this out of the ground a little bit. Let's go to 100 pounds an acre. There we go. Done and done. Let's take the thing home. Get her switched over to do some yellow peas. Camelina in the ground. I don't know what to expect, but if it comes up, we get some rain, could be a crop we might be doing on our farm for a while, so we'll see. Morning, we're back and we're filling. Haven't calibrated yet, but we're filling. So we put on inoculant. Inoculant's gonna help the P root structure nodule, nodulate, and that'll really help with our nitrogen, which is awesome about running full scrops. This baby's gonna take quite a bit of peas. I think it's 550 bushels, so this back tank's 260 bushels alone, which is almost as much as our smallest air cart. Amazing. So, I'm gonna help him figure out how much we gotta put in. We'll get this baby topped off, we'll calibrate it, and I'm gonna hit the field and start knocking these peas out. Yesterday while running the bud back, had an issue with getting the transmission to high range. So this is a nine speed transmission. It's a twin disc. And there's six gears in low range and three in high. Well, it wasn't going into high and it was jumping out of gear in the low range. Uh, talked to a buddy up in uh, Canada who runs a bud and he uh, helped design this newer ship box. And he said it's a pressure sender or switch on your high range and it basically senses pressure and it'll tell it if you're in low range to not let it go into high range if you're set for low range and vice versa. So it's like a safety switch. Well, it's going bad. It's 40 years old, like everything else. So we gotta get a new one ordered. So with that, top speed right now is nine and a half miles an hour in low range. So we'll just keep her low, that's fine. I don't care, I'll get to the field when I get to the field. We'll get a sender on order, get it fixed and I'll be able to do my 20 miles an hour again. But for now, it's just snail speed. Well, my intelligent egg told me that there's a blockage on uh, number five. So let's take a peek and see if we can find out where this is. Actually, let me run some keys through it first. That's a little easier to find it. Give her a tap. A bunch of peas will fly out. Then I can find the one that's blocked, if it is blocked. One, two, three, four, five is right here. All right, peas, 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 peas up front, peas there, there, there. That one's got a metal ring on it. Yeah, all these look like they got peas coming out of them. So, well, I don't see any blockages. I don't know what it's talking about. I'm sure there's some irregularity because that system doesn't throw an alarm like that unless there's something off. So who knows, it could be something stuck in the boot 
that's letting seed still get through, but it's just slowing it down enough that it reads it. We'll find out, I guess, as the day goes on. There's a couple things going on right now. One, the Series 2 Big Bud, the hydraulic pump, the main one that runs everything, is starting to crater and have problems. So, we ordered a pump. It's, it's on its way. We don't know if it's going to be the right one because you just never know if somebody happened to misread a number and send the incorrect one. So we're not counting on that pump being correct. We're hoping it is, but we're just gonna play it safe and we don't know when it's gonna show up and we need to get seeding. So guess what we're doing? Yeah, that's right. You guys have asked for it. You want the little bud back in action, seeding away. Well, we're gonna make this thing happen. But it needs a little bit of uh, TLC. There's a couple things on it that we need to fix and address. And uh, one, it does not have a harness for the cart. So, instead of ripping out the harness of that other tractor and all that mess, I don't even want to touch it, I found a harness, we got it, we're installing it, fixing a couple issues in there, a couple toggle switches for the hydraulics, getting that figured out, and then, if it all works great, we're going to switch tractors, and hopefully we can keep seeding, because we are having all sorts of problems with that tractor over there with the hydraulics. And the cart's been giving us problems too, but we think it's hydraulic related as well. Makes sense, right? Okay. Let's uh, finish on putting this harness on and uh, see if we can get this thing to work. Oh yeah, it's about the shiniest this thing's ever gonna be. And then it's gonna get dirty. <laughs> All right, you sir, is what we need. Okay, we'll put this in the tractor. We'll probably make some kind of mount or we'll just tape it to the window like all farmers do. Just rip out the tape and ah, that'll do. Make it work. We gotta get going. Okay, here is the 600 Pro. We'll just lay that there. Okay, let's leave the card there too. All right, we got it all hooked up. Everything's good to go. It sees the cart, it's speaking to it, which is awesome. That's what we wanted. Hydraulics seem to be good on this tractor, but we're not gonna use this cart. Uh, I wanted to make sure I got it ready to go because we were fighting this other cart with just little stuff that turns out to be big stuff. So we wanna make sure that that cart works over there, so what we're gonna do is hook this tractor to that cart so that way we can make sure it works, and if it doesn't work, there's other issues going on. Then we'll switch the carts. I know, it's confusing. But if we don't do this, we don't try this tractor with the other cart, we won't know if it's a hydraulic issue or not. And that's why we wanna check to see if we've been just dealing with hydraulic issues this whole time. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I got some riders. Better get them in. They've been very eager, asking over and over and over again, daily, hourly, every five minutes. Am I ready to get my ride? All right, go find a spot. Climb on in. I want to ride it. Yeah. Okay, we're just about ready to hook them up. A little bit of a details on these two tractors. What are the differences with the tractors? Obviously, looks. This is a Series 1. This is the third one off the line ever built of Big Butts. At least that's the story, and I can't confirm that because there's no identification numbers anywhere on the tractor. But there's a lot of reasons behind that I think that is actually the third one off the line. So anyways, this is a 435. The reason why we call it 435 is because that's what the engine horsepower is rated at. That's a five and a quarter, so 525 horsepower. This tractor here weighs about 44,000 pounds without any chloride, just the tractor right now. That tractor right there weighs about close to, I think it's like 49,000. And that one, it's got a little bit bigger footprint. As you can tell, wider tires. Well, actually there's more tires, a little bit wider surface. This one here doesn't have as much traction as that one, but it still can work. So anyways, that's a little, little bit of the difference on them. I love that tractor. Just a really awesome tractor. Just a major inconvenience that the hydraulic pump has to get a little weak. Oh, I almost lost this ladder right there. Okay. So now we got a weird shifting device here. Ah, 
works pretty decent. I made a little uh, shifter device on top of the transmission with three cables that bolts down on top of it. And then we just put three levers and then we can just kind of uh, adjust it how we want, whatever gear we want. It works. Probably not ideal, but it works. What are we watching, guys? Are we watching a tractor? Oh boy, there they go. Um, that's our doctor. Isn't that cool? Where are they taking that? He's the one that put the cast on your brother's arm. They're gonna go farming somewhere. It's like I've done this a few times. Sweet. That being said, this is the first time the 70 footer is being pulled by that 435. I don't think that uh, 435 has ever pulled over a 60 foot. Well, I take that back. I think our heavy harrow pretty sure that's a 70 foot so maybe it's pulled a 70 foot but anyways doesn't that look pretty not me oh yeah hey what has an engine a big engine a big engine and where where is it show me down there down there huh? are you sure yeah where right there yeah okay you like that big engine huh? oh okay all right, that's it. I'm doing it. Doing it. What do we got here? Uh, Dorito. Ooh, cheddar. Oh yeah, we're getting cheddar. So I have a confession to make. Been pretty sick for about a month and a half, for a little over a month and a half, and I'm finally now starting to do better. But it uh, it attacked my system pretty good. I'm weak. Oh man, am I weak. Like everything just hurts trying to move. So I have not been hitting the gym and I've been getting fatter. Why well, stop now? Plus I haven't hardly eaten anything today because I've been trying to get the tractor going. But I'm hungry. So it's in the shop. What are you doing? No, no, no. Don't drive that way. This guy's not that way. We just replaced those pins. You're gonna wear them out. The auto steer hasn't kicked off yet. Oh yeah. Okay, you might think this is ridiculous, but this is actually something that helps my sanity. So if you take this and you lock the differential, and then you do this. Yeah. Lace some rubber. Anyways. Let's go see what happened to the 435 button. It's out of the shop. It's over here somewhere. So I came over here and uh, we had to reset the depth a little bit on the drill. But we started having some problems with the cart. It's blowing the fuse on number one for whatever reason. And we went through two fuses. And we said we're not, we're done. So the 4350 cart, we're gonna park it and go hook up the 3850 to it because this is plum ridiculous. Ha! Ah, that's why you have spares. All right, let's go swap it over and hopefully can see a whole day, actually almost two days with this drill. Yeah, that's how much we haven't gotten done. That's frustrating. But anyways, we got a spare cart. We're gonna start swapping it over. <laughs> Bummer. This one well lasted. I'm sure they'll be back. And they will, absolutely.
Boys and Bulls, that's enough for today. It's about 10 o'clock. If I get back, get a shower, I'll get up real early, start a big day tomorrow. That's the way to do it. So uh, let's finish before uh, anything happens, because at nighttime is when all the problems happen. At least that's what it seems. So let's go to bed. Check it out. My ride's here. Now if only we get that light bar on here. Yeah. Oh well. Well, between the two drills, uh, we probably got about 700 acres done, so tenth of the way done seeding. Not quite a tenth. Eleventh. Eleventh and a half. Well, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Put the charger in the camera. I can do it.